Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar focused on the applications that can be done on the new Odyssey M Imager and how they can impact your research. Our speaker today is Katie Chappé, Technical Product Manager here at Lycor Biosciences. During this webinar we will have live panelists who can answer any questions that you may have. Please feel free to submit questions at any time. Now I will pass it off to Katie. Hello everyone. Thanks so much for being here. I'm excited to tell you about our powerful new imager, Odyssey M. Like previous Odyssey instruments, Odyssey M is a flatbed scanning imager that can image western bluffs and gels. Odyssey M also has a plate holder, as shown here, and a slide holder. What's really exciting about Odyssey M is the wide array of imaging channels available. In addition to two near-infrared fluorescent channels, Odyssey M has two fluorescent channels in the visible range, as well as channels that can image colorimetric and luminescent wavelengths. As scientists, we are often asking complex questions that require a multitude of experiments to dissect and answer. This often requires using a variety of different instrumentation. If, for example, you are interested in how a particular treatment impacts a certain type of cell and what the mechanism behind that treatment is, you might be looking at direct outcomes, such as cell viability after treatment, involvement of specific proteins using western blots, and changes at the tissue level. To answer this question, you would need a plate reader, film in a dark room, and a high-powered microscope. These instruments might all be available to you, but in other labs or even across campus. What I hope to show you today is that with the Odyssey M, you no longer need to have multiple instruments to perform these experiments. Odyssey M's many channels not only allow us to improve upon two of our staple experiments, the Western blot and the in-cell Western assay, but it also allows us to perform many new assays, including cell analysis, protein estimation, and slide imaging, among others. The first application I'd like to discuss is the Western blot. Western blots are a workhorse of biology labs. In Western blots, complex mixtures of proteins are separated by size, and specific proteins can be identified using antibodies specific to the target of interest. These experiments are traditionally detected with chemiluminescence, where membranes containing chemiluminescent substrates are exposed to X-ray film in a dark room. Western blot detection using fluorescently labeled antibodies allows for multiplexing because antibodies specific to different proteins can be labeled with distinct fluorophores that can then be distinguished based on color when simultaneously imaged. Multiplexing increases reproducibility because you can normalize on the same blot that probes target, and efficiency because fewer total blots need to be run to collect the same amount of data when multiple proteins are identified on each blot. Odyssey M can image in four fluorescent channels because of spectral similarity between the 488 and 520 channels. Only one should be used at a time, meaning that three targets can be imaged in a single blot. To assess differences in protein amounts across different samples in a meaningful way, the signal detected must be normalized to an internal control to correct for experimental variability. This slide shows the same jerket lysate dilution, this time stained with revert 520. Looking at the relationship between the amount of protein loaded and the signal detected, we can see that within the system, revert 520 has similar linearity to revert 700. Using the 520 channel for normalization opens up the 700 channel, which is generally a more sensitive channel, to target detection in a three-color western blot. This slide shows an example of a three-color western blot, with each channel shown separately. Normalization is done with revert 520, and two targets, BCL2 and BCLXL, are detected in the 700 and 800 channels. Normalizing to revert 520 provides confidence that any changes in BCL2 or BCLXL are due to changes based on sample treatment, not to experimental variability. Normalization can also be done using housekeeping proteins, where all three channels detect specific protein targets. It's important to detect all targets in a range where each target gives a linear response. As this linearity graph shows, it can be challenging to find an optimal range for all three targets, but it can be done. When using protein targets in all three channels, we recommend detecting the most highly abundant target in a visible channel and using the IR channels for lower abundance targets. The next experiment I would like to discuss is the in-cell Western assay. 
The in-cell western assay is a plate-based quantitative immunofluorescence assay. In this experiment, cultured cells are treated with an experimental treatment of interest, then fixed and permeabilized. Once the cells have been permeabilized, they can be incubated with target-specific antibodies and fluorescently labeled secondary antibodies for fluorescent target detection. Using immunofluorescence to detect targets of interest provides specificity similar to what we see in Western blots. While the plate-based format lends increased throughput and repeatability, similar to an ELISA assay. This plate-based format requires optimizing a number of experimental factors beyond those that need to be optimized in a traditional Western blot. Lycor's Imperia Studio software can help with the design of these experiments. This chart highlights the different steps that should be optimized in the development of an in-cell Western assay. This is often an iterative process where some conditions may need to be re-optimized once other conditions have been finalized. In an example I'd like to share, the goal was to assess changes in ERK phosphorylation upon treatment with the small molecule TPA. While I won't go over every step of the InCell Western optimization workflow, I want to highlight a few aspects of this process. The first point of optimization I'd like to discuss is normalization. As is the case with Western blots, a normalization step is critical to obtaining quantitative data from an InCell Western assay. In an in-cell western, target signal is normalized to the number of cells per well, which is inherently variable. For normalization, Lycor has traditionally used cell tag 700. In the ERK phosphorylation experiment, HeLa cells and ERK1 knockout HeLa cells were used. As you can see from cell dilution experiments of both cell lines, we see good linearity through 25,000 cells, after which point the cells are far overconfluent. What's exciting is that with Odyssey M, we can now move normalization into a visible channel, leaving both IR channels open for target analysis. Here, the wild type and ERK1 knockout HeLa cells were diluted and then stained with cell tag 520. Cell tag 520 shows linear signal in the same range of cell numbers to cell tag 700. The next optimization step I'd like to show is optimization of antibody dilution. By titrating the dilution of primary antibody used, we can identify the dilution that provides the highest specific signal with the lowest nonspecific background signal. Here, various dilutions of ERK1 antibody were added to wild-type HeLa and ERK1 knockout HeLa cells. When we look at the change in ERK1 levels, you can see that the greatest difference in, in signal between wild-type and ERK1 knockout cells is at the lowest dilution. One final optimization step of the InCell Western assay that I'd like to discuss is the Z prime factor determination. The Z prime factor is a statistical parameter that can be used to assess the quality and reliability of an assay. In a Z factor experiment, data from positive control, negative control, and background wells are compared. Signal is shown on the Y axis, and sample number or replicate number is shown on the X axis. The top data set represents the positive control and the bottom data set represents the negative control. The z-factor calculation takes into account both the means and the standard deviation for both data sets, resulting in a value that reflects the separation between the two data sets. Z-factor measurements typically have a score between 0 and 1. 1 is ideal. 0 0.5 to 1.0 is excellent and a reflection of ideal conditions for your assay. 0 to 0 0.5 is marginal and should be further optimized. Less than or equal to zero is poor and reflects poor separation between your positive and negative control data sets. In the ERK phosphorylation story, a Z prime factor was calculated by comparing the ERK signal detected in wild type and ERK1 knockout HeLa cells. The calculated Z prime factor was 0 0.735, which indicates that ERK1 antibody detection is optimized. It is worth noting that a second Z prime factor was calculated for detection of phosphorylated ERK, but in the interest of time, I will not discuss those results today. Once all of the important parameters are optimized, the InCell Western assay is ready to use to answer experimental questions. In our ERK phosphorylation example, HeLa cells were treated with increasing concentrations of TPA, which should induce ERK phosphorylation. Phospho-ERK was detected in the 800 channel. 
pan erc was detected in the 700 channel, and Celtec 520 was used for normalization. By plotting the change in signal in the 700 and 800 channels, we can see the impact of TPA on total ERC, which is minimal, and on phosphorylated ERC, which increases as TPA increases as we expect. Another family of experiments we can do using the expanded detection options on Odyssey M is cell analysis. In addition to providing substantial improvements to Western blotin and cell Western assays, the wide range of channels available on Odyssey M opens the door to numerous other types of assays, including cell analysis. These assays use various detection systems, from simple dyes to more complex analyte recognition systems to assess cell health, such as viability, apoptosis, and proliferation, among others. These assays are typically performed in 96-well plates and analyzed on a plate reader. Many of these assays can now be detected on Odyssey M. Cell analysis assays are detected either by luminescence, absorbance, or fluorescence. As shown in this table, Odyssey M has comparable channels for each of these detection modes. While the transillumination and fluorescence channels on Odyssey M are static, they are well suited to many commercial absorbance and fluorescence-based detection kits. In the next few slides, I'll show examples of cell viability assays in each detect detection mode on Odyssey M. The first assay I want to share is a luminescence assay. The Promega caspase glow assay was used to assess apoptosis in HeLa cells treated with increasing concentrations of the apoptosis, including compound staurosporine. Luminescence was measured on Odyssey M using the chemiluminescence channel. As you can see, the total caspase signal, which correlates with the degree of apoptosis in each sample, increases with increased starosporin, which is what we expect to see. Absorbance-based cell viability assays can also be detected on Odyssey M. Here we use the Thermo Fisher Cyquant MTT assay, in which live cells metabolize MTT to a chromogenic product with an absorbance maximum of 570 nanometers. HeLa cells were treated with starosporin and then treated with the MTT reagent. Absorbance was detected in the 525 trans channel, resulting in a dose-dependent decrease in signal, indicating reduced cell viability with increasing starosporin concentration. Odyssey M can also be used to detect multiple fluorescence-based viability kits. Here we used R&D Systems Calcine AM assay in which live cells metabolize non-fluorescent calcine AM to fluorescent calcine, which is excited by 490 nanometer light. HeLa cells were treated with starosporine and then treated with the calcine AM reagent. Fluorescence was detected in the 488 channel, resulting in a dose-dependent decrease in signal, indicating reduced cell viability with increasing starosporine concentration. Next, I'd like to show how Odyssey M can be used in protein estimation assays. Protein estimation assays, such as the BCA, Bradford, and Modified Lowry assays, are essential tools for protein work, from cell lysates to purified proteins. These assays estimate protein concentration based on a colorimetric response and are typically done using the absorbance mode of a plate reader. As I mentioned, Odyssey M can be used for absorbance-based detection using several of the transillumination channels on the instrument. The BCA assay is one of the most common protein estimation assays. Here, the BCA assay was used to generate a standard curve of BSA samples. In addition, several protein solutions of known theoretical concentration were prepared, and the experimental concentrations were interpolated from the standard curve. The percent change from the theoretical concentration for each sample is shown here. These interpolated concentrations fall well within the expected error of these assays. Within the range of concentrations you might expect for cell lysates going into western blots, Odyssey M provides reliable data in this assay. These results highlight that Odyssey M allows for easy integration of protein estimation into the western blotting workflow. You don't need a separate piece of equipment to acquire this simple but critical piece of data. The final application I'd like to highlight today is slide imaging. 
Slide imaging involves the visualization of tissue sections and tissue-specific targets using various stains. These experiments require high-powered microscopes for detection and are often limited by microscope resolution, time, and instrument cost. Odyssey M can image slides in multiple channels at up to 5 micron resolution, providing a convenient alternative option for imaging slides in multiple channels and rapidly triaging a large set of slides. Slides can be imaged in fluorescent and transillumination channels on Odyssey M. Here, images of swine intestine stained with either target-specific antibodies in the 700 and 800 fluorescent channels or stained with H&E are shown. These images are taken at 5 micron, which is high enough resolution to see tissue localization between two images. This zoomed-in portion of the 5 micron image shown on the previous slide demonstrates the degree of detail images that Odyssey M can provide. We see well-resolved intestinal structure in this image. In addition, the line scanner on Odyssey M allows rapid scanning. It takes about 30 minutes to image 12 slides in one channel, meaning that large sets of slides can be quickly scanned on Odyssey M and triaged to determine which slides should be taken onto higher resolution microscopy, which is much more time consuming. In summary, not only does Odyssey M provide significant improvements for Western blots and in-cell Westerns by allowing for increased multiplexing with the addition of two visible fluorescent channels, it also opens the door to analyzing many other types of experiments, including cell analysis, protein estimation, and slide imaging, along with many others I didn't have time to discuss today. I hope I've been able to show you that Odyssey M is a great option for performing a variety of different experiments and can replace multiple other instruments, providing rapid, high-quality data that can streamline your research and help you answer your important research questions efficiently and effectively. Thank you, Katie, for explaining the applications and showing how the Odyssey M can expand the research capabilities for researchers. Also, thank you all for attending our webinar. We hope that you've learned something new about how the Odyssey M can positively impact your lab and save you valuable time and resources. If you have any questions about today's webinar, please reach out to us at biosales at lycor.com. Feel free to continue to send in questions for our panelists. We will keep the webinar going for five more minutes to allow for any more questions. Thanks again for attending.